Well, I'm here waiting for the train, and this evening you'll see a trip I made to the Wilmington and Western Railroad yesterday to watch them uh, really assemble the train and bring it over here. The story behind the story. When you take a ride on this historic uh, steam railroad, uh, what you don't see behind the scenes is the dedication of the volunteers who start at 7 in the morning pulling the massive steam engine out of the uh, engine shed, firing it up, putting the cars together, uh, lubricating, uh, doing the maintenance on the engine. All the things that go on behind the scenes that you'll see today in this segment of the program. As well as we wanted to remind you that in spite of the storm that devastated a lot of Red Clay Valley last year, the Wilmington Western is still operating only as far as Brandywine Springs right now, but still it's a ride back in history and we invite you to come out on a weekend and take a ride. Uh, we'll be talking to some of the folks at the Wilmington Western today and hopefully you'll get a better idea of what it really takes to run a railroad. near Westchester, Pennsylvania, and I work at Quaker School, or Westtown School, and uh, I've been working there a long time, and I've been a volunteer here uh, since about 1985, so coming, up, coming up on 20 years. And my main interest has been firing. What we're hoping. Is your first name Bill, did you say? This is really, uh, we have a, in our mechanics shop, we have a, uh, one of those basins where there's a cleaning fluid that flows actually out of a brush and it flows down a drain and it's recycled. Round and round and round, and you use it for scrubbing off the threads of bolts and the things that you're trying to clean. Uh, and 
this fluid that's in here, that, that's a hypercarbon. So it is like kerosene or WD-40 or something. And it, it burns, and so that's what they, they have for us to do this with. Flat wood. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of sauce. <laughs> sauce. As you can see the color of the, yeah. the stuff that's in there is all stuff that's come off of. Doing some I remember one thing, and that is to take the stack off, to take the cover off the stack. That's, That's a good idea. Yep. <coughs> camera matches. Yeah, old box match. Now the idea is to strike match and wait a couple hours. <laughs> we strike the match. Back and we're here today with uh, somebody that holds a very unusual job. I'm the fireman on the steam locomotive that we're standing beside. And uh, we began the project this morning by basically building a wood fire. We had to make use of some kerosene to uh, get the wood to get started and then basically threw on coal and uh, in the background basically you can hear the fire crackling and the coal sizzling and so that's the project. It it'll take us about three hours to get enough pressure up in the boiler to be able to move the locomotive and then just to maintain that pressure which is about 170 pounds per square inch uh, we'll need that for the day's work. Now I came in this morning at about 7 a.m. and they were pulling the engine out and uh, you'll see some of that footage and I see some cinders actually coming down now. This is moisture. It's interesting. This seems to be some kind of uh, moisture that's coming out and probably it's water that was in some of the lines that's getting cooked out. So, Well, uh, these uh, steam engines are not quite as easy to start as your Buick out in a driveway. You don't just turn the key. Uh, there's a real art to getting this uh, started and fired. And then when you're rolling actually on the track, that's, a, that's another story altogether. Yeah, when you're rolling along the track, you have to be checking into the fire to see that it's good and bright when it needs to be bright. Uh, the most important thing is to be looking at the water level uh, in the gauge glasses on the back head because that's telling you where the water level is in the boiler. It can be really very, 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 very bad if the water gets too low. So the engineer and the fireman are both watching that like hawks. It's calm looking, but uh, we're looking at it. And it takes two people uh, to run one of these machines. And um, how old is this particular engine? This, I think, is 1909 it was built. It's a switching engine, that is, it has no leading pilot wheels and no uh, pony wheels, just six driving wheels. And it was used in railroad yards to take trains apart, put them together, shift things around. So it never really saw a lot of fast road action. But it was built in 1909. It's still running thanks to the dedication of the folks here out at the Wilmington and Western. And we'll be back with a little bit more. Uh, so stay tuned. Quite different than it did. You can see you can see coal burning right in the front, and then down in the back, and out toward the 